Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Peter here. Today's video is a first impressions video of the House Olfactive Studios. Uh, they sent me this really lovely presentation box, with some samples. So I am going to do full reviews for most of them, if not all of them, at some point. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a brief overview of my thoughts on each and let you know my favourites. The main reason I was interested in Olfactive Studios was the, the overall concept of the house is quite interesting to me. They basically design their fragrances around an image and a picture, a photograph, um, and create a scent that represents that photograph. And I think that's a very cool idea. I'm quite a keen photographer myself. I enjoy taking uh, photography on my travels. So, if you ever want to use one of my photos, you're quite welcome. <laughs> so I was very interested in, in experiencing these scents because I've actually never seen them in a store. Uh, where I live personally, I, I haven't seen these anywhere. So it was good of them to send me the samples to test out. This is quite fascinating because I do view, when I, when I scent smells, they usually do give me a very strong image or I imagine a picture that it could be led to either a moving image or, or a photograph or you know some kind of idea of what the fragrance is in, in picture form and colour. So for them to actually design it themselves that way it, it actually allows me to see whether or not I agree if the fragrance does smell like that image which I found quite fascinating. There is There are a few in here that I do think match the image very well. There's a few that I don't really get personally and I would probably do something different but we'll get into it. The first one is called Panorama and it is based around this photo here which I believe is in Japan and it's an urban modern garden. So you have the, the urban house here, very modern minimalist house in this sort of very minimalist uh, garden and cityscape background with the city skyline here. As a lovely photo, very, very green and uh, dry. It's obviously kind of a hot but humid kind of climate. There's trees, there's shrubs, there's bushes. Very, very green but with a slick, very, very modern minimalist uh, house with uh, steel and, and wood. It's a very nice photograph. This is the uh, scent for it and it's uh, actually quite an interesting one. I'll read you the notes. It has Wasabi Accord, which is like um, a green spice that you often get in uh, with sushi, things like that. Fig leaf, bergamot, citruses, lemon, galbanum, violet leaf, oh wow, I can smell it already. Uh, fresh cut grass, myrrh, fir balsam, patchouli, tonka bean and labdamum. This is very, very green and I definitely get the, the fresh cut grass kind of smell. To me it doesn't particularly smell of wasabi but you get the the warmth, the kind of the subtle kind of spiciness behind the green and as, and as well as the kind of the grassy element there's more of a herbaceous kind of kind of like waxy kind of leaves a more thicker green texture. I did actually test all of these a couple of days ago and this actually does change from the opening it, it doesn't quite stay as it does in the opening it does develop a little bit and change it's unusual I, I can't think of any particular fragrance that it reminds me of even though green scents are quite common this does have something a little bit unusual about it and I will be definitely interested in, in reviewing that properly and really kind of describing the changes to you uh, later on when I review this fully but it's very very green there's a slight kind of spice and I actually think it matches the image very well. It does smell quite modern and clean cut. I think it's good if you like green fragrances. Green isn't for everybody. The next one in the booklet is called Flashback, which contains rhubarb, uh, grapefruit, orange, uh, pink pepper, uh, apple, cedarwood, vetiver, amber, and musks. So right off the bat, this is very clean and fresh. You definitely get the, the, the grapefruit and the orange and a little bit of the rhubarb. It's quite an unusual kind of note in perfume which I've smelt before in one of the Hermes uh, fragrances. I actually quite like it. It's quite unusual but very nice. The photo is called Flashback and it's this kind of image. See, I, I, personally I don't know how you create a fragrance based around that 
image, um, what that's meant to represent in smell. I'm not, I'm not really sure about that one. I would say it's more masculine than feminine, as was the last one, was also kind of more masculine. On the tops, it's definitely dominated by the fruits and the citrus. Uh, with You actually get the musk from the beginning. I do definitely smell a slightly more, not quite clean musk. There's a little bit of an animalic musk, rather than just like a, a white musk like the Body Shop. It's not that kind of musk. But you do get the, the musk mixed with the with the rhubarb and the orange and the grapefruit. It's interesting to me, it smells like a springtime summer fragrance in the day. Very casual, uh, leaning on the masculine. This one's okay, but probably not one I would personally wear myself. But it's definitely a very easy to wear uh, fragrance you could wear kind of at any time. I don't think anyone will particularly dislike that one. Uh, the next one in the line is called Lumiere Blanche, and it's based around this image. If you can see that, I can't work out, it looks like snow, snow and ice, but there's people in swimming shorts. So for a second I wondered whether it was salt, but I don't think you would have salt in that kind of quantity to make a, a giant hill. But then I'm questioning why everyone would be in swimming shorts on essentially an iceberg. So I, I, I'm not sure if it's salt or ice, but regardless, people are having a good time on a white background. Again, I'm not quite sure how you would represent that in scent, so this is gonna be an interesting one. Uh, notes of cardamom, star anise, and cinnamon, so it's gonna be presumably spicy, with iris, almond milk, uh, cashmere wood, cedar wood, sandalwood, tonka bean, and white musks. Those notes sound actually very nice. Uh, the colour of this is quite cool. It's like kind of milky translucence. I've never actually seen that in a fragrance before, but it does look quite cool. <sighs> to me, this actually smells tropical. Almost like a, a tropical suntan lotion. It reminds me straight away of something like Hawaii. So the image, to me, uh, I, I would picture this more a hammock, drinking drinking out of a fresh cut coconut just with a straw pushed into the top. Lounging in a hammock in Hawaii is, is personally, if I didn't know that the image was for this, that's, that's what I would imagine personally. I don't particularly get any of the spices, they are very subtle in the mix, it's not a particularly overly spicy fragrance. I think what I'm smelling is, is the mixture of iris with the almond milk and the sandalwood with the tonka bean. There's a sweetness, there's a smoothness, an ever so slight powderiness, but it gives me vi vibes very much so of summertime tropical scents, almost like a summer cocktail or something along those lines. Uh, interesting, totally unisex very casual daytime so it's interesting um, how the perfumer interpreted this image into smelling like that I find that quite fascinating as like an art project because I, I would have a totally different association with that one but this is very cool I'm enjoying this this one is called still life and this one is actually I would say my favorite from the from the line I don't particularly like the photograph on this one, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think it's meant to represent kind of like a party, party atmosphere. So uh, this is basically uh, mirror balls and kind of party strewn ribbons. It's it's funny, on, on the back of, of this booklet are the pictures of the perfumer. The perfumer for this particular fragrance, we all have, um, I think, perceived notions of what a perfumer would look like at least I do and the guy that made this does not look like a perfumer to me uh, if you can see all these perfumers like this guy here look he looks like uh, what I imagine a perfumer to look like the guy that made this fragrance is this dude here with the sunglasses and the wavy blonde hair and he looks like he should be on a beach in Australia with a surfboard he looks like a really cool very laid-back casual surfer dude 
that's not how I imagine a perfumer at all. So it's quite cool um, how, how, how we perceive things in other people that are completely wrong. Um, again, I think how this works is it's, it's not specifically the photograph, it's what the photograph represents. But again, open to interpretation as, you know, any art is. But this is definitely my, uh, probably my favourite one. This is very effervescent in the opening and kind of sparkly. It's fresh, it's clean, it's sparkly, it's kind of summertime. The notes I should say are yuzu, uh, peppers, pink pepper, uh, black pepper, Szechuan pepper, star anise, so there's loads of spices, dark rum, cedarwood and ambrox and galbanum. I'm very anti-alcohol in any fragrance uh, from my own personal, uh, however you want to call it. I, I don't drink alcohol and I don't like smelling of alcohol. Personally I don't smell rum in this but that for me that's a good thing. If I did smell the rum, I, I wouldn't like it or I wouldn't want to buy it. As it is, I, I don't smell alcohol vibes, so if that worries you, don't let it put you off because I think it's very nice. It smells more like a grapefruit vibe, which isn't listed, but it's obviously a lot of it is the yuzu. Funnily enough, all the, all the peppers listed, I don't really smell pepper, so I think they're used in a smaller quantity. Maybe that helps with the effervescentness of the fragrance. To me it smells like fresh, juicy citruses, it smells like very vibrant, fizzy kind of summertime. Very very easy to like, uh, definitely probably a compliment getter, I would say this was going to please most people. Very very easy to wear and casual and pleasant. Perfect for a, a summertime fragrance, I'm actually interested in buying this one myself uh, as, as a summertime fragrance. I think this would work very, very well in the in the nice uh, summertime heat in you know casual shorts and a t-shirt. There's just something about it that smells of summertime to me, and but in a really good way. Although it's extremely simple, you know, it's not monstrously complex. It's just nicely blended, and it smells really good. I, I think that would make a very good summer scent. This one might end up in my collection uh, as a summertime fragrance. We'll see when I test it properly for my review. A sparkling and festive perfume, still life, is a celebration of life. A surprising and luminous perfume that invites you to celebrate its style with a whirlwind of exotic cocktails. Again, it doesn't smell boozy to me, so I I'm not worried. But uh, yeah, it smells really good. Next one is Auto Portrait, which is this uh, lovely photograph of... Uh, you would think it's sky for a second, but then you'll see the ripples in the water and it's actually a picture of a reflection in the water of someone walking by. A very nice image. Again, I'm, I'm not quite sure how you would interpret that as a fragrance unless you go for more the, the shading between the dark and the light um, and the reflective nature of, of the image. So again, quite an interesting concept how, how the perfume how the perfumer would interpretate this one. So this one, bergamot, uh, benzoin, incense, musks, oak moss, cedarwood and vetiver. So I would say looking at that with the with the dark sky kind of reflecting into the water there that the incense might represent kind of the shadows, the darkness of the sky uh, and the lighter notes of you know the bergamot and the musk represents kind of the lighter part of the sky and, and the, the, the foreground of the, of the of the water there, as a, but we'll see how it smells. I'm not sure how to describe this one. I definitely sense the the incensey kind of vibe. I actually get something along the lines of paper or cardboard. Um, it has kind of a dry quality to it. Maybe as if the incense was more not quite a smoky incense, but more like a, a an ashy kind of powdery incense, like an incense cone that's been burned rather than the actual incense smoke. I don't particularly detect the, the citrus in the opening, the bergamot. Um, a little bit unusual, I would say it's a mixture of the incense and the musk. Again, to be honest, I've, I, I've not really smelt a fragrance that smells like that. I can't say that I can compare it to anything. It's not a heavy fragrance, it is quite light. 
it sits closer to the skin even already. It's interesting, I'll, I'll be interested in to see how that develops on skin. But it is quite soft. Uh, the next one is Chambre Noir. This is arguably one of the most popular from the house, at least that, that, that gets talked about with reviewers. Uh, that's the image that it's meant to represent, um, a nice view from a balcony uh, with a city skyline with notes of jasmine, pyrus, uh, violet, incense, prune, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, vanilla and leather. Straight off the bat I say I get a very soft, a very soft brown leather but the sweetness is there from the beginning. You definitely get the vanilla, a little bit of the violet actually. The violet is definitely there. I feel like the violet kind of makes it slightly chalky in, 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 in texture, even though it's not a texture, if you, if you know what I mean. I do find at times that jasmine um, can actually have a, a leather-like quality, a leather suede kind of uh, olfactive texture, as it were. And you definitely do smell the jasmine, but the way, way the leather cord behind it uh, kind of almost mirrors the jasmine, I find. It's definitely nice, uh, very casual, but could be quite smart as well. I could see you being dressed up or very casual with this one, daytime or in the evening. Definitely more masculine, but I would be definitely interested in testing that on skin and seeing if I, if I really like it more when I wear it properly on skin. First impressions are good though, I think that's uh, one of the, the best ones in the line. And the last one is Ombre Indigo, and the image for this is very striking. Uh, it's a beautiful photograph, again, of a pond or a lake uh, that's reflecting the sky. Very, very dark at the bottom there, and the sun's coming in from the back. Uh, with the person kind of lit up in a really rich uh, orange kind of gown. The juice for this matches the the reflective image of the water itself. This is one of the more unusual fragrances that I've that I've tried and I think this is one of the best in in the collection and it's quite unique. So the, so the notes for this are uh, petit grain, tuberose, saffron, plum, vetiver, leather, incense, benzoin, amber and musk. For me the, the three main notes you're gonna smell in the opening are definitely saffron, plum and the leather. The saffron kind of gives it this warm rich uh, heat that's very very nice mixed with this kind of a dark purple kind of jammy plum and this very smooth leather and I do think it does a very good job of, of matching the, the image here. The saffron represents the you know the bright orange hue of the clothing. I think the plum represents perfectly the colour of, of the water and again the leather could mirror more the kind of the darker shadow of the image uh, as well as the incense. This is definitely unique. I would say if you like the note of plum and you, you like more unusual kind of fragrances then this is definitely worth checking out. And yeah, it's just very unusual. I like the mix of the saffron with the plum and the leather accord is quite nice. Uh, I did test this on skin a couple of days ago because it was one that struck me as being quite interesting and it seems to dry down to a very very nice kind of just soft, uh, soft leather, very very smooth. All of them quite interesting and I quite enjoyed you know, whether or not I agree with the with the photograph choice. A couple of them I don't really uh, get the, the connection. Uh, maybe there's more of kind of a, a larger uh, kind of view around it rather than specifically the image, more, more the idea that it represents. Ones that I think match the photograph really well were Panorama with the, with the lush greens and the urban edge. I think that's uh, perfectly blended to that image. I think that's... Uh, very well done. Chambre Noir I actually think matches the image quite well because I imagine the person that would wear it is a very kind of uh, smart modern kind of guy and probably has more like a penthouse apartment with a great view across the city. It has kind of that 
different uh, feeling towards it and I think that's kind of what the perfumer imagined as well where they probably have a really nice leather sofa in the apartment and uh, yeah I think that's good and the best one is this one which is ombre indigo I think does a very good job of capturing what the image might smell like I think it's very good the saffron for the orange the the incense and the leather and the plum for, for the reflections in the water there I think is very good uh, so that's my first impressions of them all I will be getting around to doing some full reviews my three favorites from the house probably in order are still life ombre indigo and Chambre Noir are my three favourites, so that they will be what I review first. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Take care.